I have already used the similarity between the universal law of gravity and Coulomb's law to introduce the electric field as a neat shortcut to calculate the electric force, similar to when we use the gravitational field G to calculate the force of gravity as mg instead of using the universal law of gravity. We have been doing something else when we were talking about gravity. That is, when we consider the energy or the work done by gravity. When I calculate the work done by gravity when an object is lifted to a height h, I get that that work is negative mgh. Now, because gravity is a conservative force, we were able to introduce the idea of a potential energy, which is defined as the change of potential energy is minus the work done by the conservative force, in this case, gravity. So, minus minus mgh gave us the change of potential energy due to gravity is mgh. From now on, when we calculate conservation of energy, we can leave the work done by gravity out and instead use the simpler change in potential energy. Now the question is, can we do something similar with electric force? The answer is, you might have guessed it, yes, we can. The electric force, as is gravity, is a conservative force. Therefore, we can replace the work done by the electric force by the idea of a change in potential energy. In this case, we would have the potential electric energy. The work done by the electric force is the charge that it moves times the electric field and then times the distance traveled. Or if the field is changing, integrating uh, the charge Q times E over the distance traveled. So we have our electric potential energy. Now we want to simplify this one step further. That is, we want to divide it by the charge that is in the electric field. And then what we get is a change in energy per charge. This can be very useful as if you know this change of energy per charge, we just have to multiply it by the amount of charge that undergoes this change to get the total energy. This change of energy per charge, we call it in North America, delta V, and the unit of it is volts. So one volt is equal to a joule per coulomb. If you look back at gravity, the equivalent of this would have been G times H. So if we would define an energy per mass, we would get g times h, and then we could just multiply that with the mass if we want the actual change in potential energy. So if I take the formula from before and I divide by q, I get something very simple. That is that the change in electric potential is minus the integral of the electric field along the path that we are moving. With gravity, we have the vector field of gravity that points towards the object that's causing it, in this case, for example, the Earth. And then we would have uh, these equipotential lines uh, around it where the potential energy of an object would be the same. But in this case, the higher we go away from the surface, the higher the potential energy of an object. Now, with the electric field, we can do exactly the same. Uh, where we have these red lines here that are perpendicular to the electric field, which represent the equipotential lines around a point charge in this case. If we have a negative point charge, then the potential behaves similar to gravity. That is, the further we go away, the more potential we have. So the field lines actually point from higher potential to lower potential. If you have a positive point charge, then the potential gets higher the closer we get to a positive charge. The closer we are to it with a positive test charge, the more potential of uh, repulsion uh, we have. In both cases, the electric field is perpendicular to the equipotential lines and points 
in the direction in which the potential goes down. So with a positive charge, uh, the potential gets lower and lower and lower the further away we get from it. This is the direction the field is pointing away from positive charges. And it gets higher and higher the closer we get to it. In this case, when we get closer, we travel against the field lines. With the negative charge, it's the same thing. Just this time, the electric field points towards the negative charge. So the closer we get to the negative charge, the lower the potential is. And if we go away from the negative charge, then we travel against the electric field lines and our potential goes up. We can see this effect of the electric field lines pointing towards lower potential also when we just reverse the integral that we did before. So the electric field is actually the partial derivation in space of the electric potential. This will give us a vector that always points in the direction in which the potential goes down. All of this becomes very simple and very useful if we talk about uniform electric fields. For example, between two charge plates where the field lines are parallel and where the magnitude of the field is the same no matter where you are. In this case, the integral simplifies to the dot product between the electric field and the displacement between two points in the field. Don't forget that there is a minus in front of it because of the way how uh, the change in potential energy was defined. The partial three-dimensional derivation that gives us the gradient or the way the field goes down uh, is also much simpler in a uniform electric field. Then you can replace the gradient or partial derivation in space by dividing the change in potential over the displacement traveled along a field line. As a quick summary, we introduced the change in electric potential energy, delta U, which is similar to the change in gravitational potential energy. And then we introduced the change in electric potential without the energy part, which is actually electric potential energy per charge. So one volt of electric potential means you get one joules for each coulomb of charge that travels through this potential. We also have seen that there is a link between the electric field lines and the equipotential line. The field lines are perpendicular to the potential line and always point in the direction in which the potential goes down, which is also visible with the partial derivation here. Or if you go the other way around, you can integrate the field to get to the change in electric potential. Remember that the electrostatic force is a conservative force. This means that the change in potential energy is independent of the path traveled. So instead of having complicated displacements, you might as well split up your displacements in parts that go perpendicular to the electric field and parts that go along the electric field. This way you can simplify the integration and get to the result much faster.